Ned, I'd love to know how consciousness works. And we have all these different theories and uh, uh, amazing how they all uh, contrast with each other. But I think one of the problems is, is that we say consciousness then try to immediately explain it. But what do we really mean by consciousness? What are the kinds of ways we can dissect consciousness and tease parts one from the other so we can really see what this thing is that we're trying to explain? I think it's a really important question. and. Um, the, I like to see things in terms of two different distinctions. One is phenomenal consciousness versus access consciousness. So phenomenal consciousness is what I really mean by consciousness. It's the, um, the what it's likeness of experience, the redness of red, as Christoph Koch likes to say. Mm -hmm. Access consciousness is what we do with that phenomenal consciousness when we put it into our cognitive system when we apply concepts to it and think and reason using the contents of perception. Um, so that's access consciousness. The other distinction that I like to use is the distinction between the content of consciousness. So for example, red, you know, the experience of red versus the experience of green versus the, what makes that content conscious as opposed to unconscious, as opposed to an unconscious percept. One of the developments in the last 10 years has been we're much more certain now that there really is unconscious perception. Right. We can unconsciously represent something as red. Um, and we know how to do that now in a very reliable way. Mm. We, that was a, that's, been a, that's been one of the big advances. Blindsight and... Well, more interestingly than Bonsai, I think, is binocular rivalry. Yeah. And in particular, there's a... So binocular rivalry is you get a stimulus in one eye and a stimulus in the other eye. And then your whole visual field is occupied first by one image and then by the other image with small periods in between where there's a bit of patchy combination. Mm -hmm. And um, Christoph Koch and now Tsuchiya developed a procedure called this odd name of continuous flash suppression, uh, which isn't very descriptive, but what it is is that they've, they figured out that if you put a really fast-moving colored stimulus in one eye, what was in the other eye would be unconsciously perceived for up to two or three minutes pretty reliably, mm -hmm. unless you blink. Mm -hmm. um, and the effect of that is we can now look at unconscious perception in a reliable way. It's really been a terrific tool. Mm -hmm. Um, and we can, you know, ask the question what the difference is between conscious and unconscious perception. Mm. And also there's been a lot of advances in the question of what makes a person conscious as opposed to unconscious. And so the neural bases of these different things are somewhat different. So we now know that the neural basis of the consciousness of a person is something to do with the, um, the connectivity between the cortex, the sort of, you know, modern human um, uh, covering the outside of the yeah, brain. Covering the outside of the brain. And the, th the thalamus is structure right in the middle of the brain. So it's, it's connectivity of that that seems to underlie the difference between a conscious human being and somebody in a, in a persistent vegetative so, state. Here's one of the problems with the word consciousness. In this case, we're, we're using consciousness almost as a synonym for a wake, a wakefulness or a sleep or, yeah. or attention. Yeah. Uh, as, as opposed to the inner subjectivity of, of the inner movie that we so-called yeah. see. Yeah. So, so but I think it's the not exactly... The two are related, obviously. The two are related. It's not exactly wake... This, this connectivity is about the subjectivity, not about wakefulness, because we have that subjectivity in, in uh, some forms of sleep with that connectivity intact. Is, is, so how, how would that work? You mean like in dreaming? Yeah, like in dreaming, yeah. And so with that connectivity intact, you, you still have the subjectivity in yes. dreaming. Yes. Uh, and it is, the underlying basis of it is the, is the connectivity between the cortex and, and the, the thalamus. And if that's interrupted through trauma or something? Then you're in the vegetative state. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, and therefore, it's not just you're, 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 you're not only not perceiving, you're not behaving. Yeah, that's so, right, yeah. So you, you, you can't create the so-called philosophical uh, zombie in biological that's right. creatures. That's <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but there are zombie states in biological creatures, as, as Christoph uh, 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 has, you know, has, has shown. Uh, for example, we have two visual systems. 
uh, a dorsal visual system across the top of the head, which is an unconscious visual system, mm. and then a conscious visual system um, on this part of the head. Mm. And um, so the, the top of the head system is a zombie system. So we do have a certain zombieish aspect of uh, that we have ourselves. So with so much of our of our physiology devoted to non-conscious, I won't say unconscious, but non-conscious activities, and consciousness being, when you really think about it, it seems to be our whole world, yeah. everything we do. Yeah. But the more you think about it, the less and less it, it actually encompasses of what our yes. brain does, our whole cerebellum. Small brain in the back, you know, co does coordination, a whole lot of other yeah. things, you know, you know, and so little of the brain seems related to what we think is everything in consciousness. In That's fact, right. The, yeah. the brain's getting filled up, and we still can't find consciousness. Yeah. Well, that leads one to wonder just how um, how important, from the point of view of uh, uh, you know, of utility and evolutionary, uh, uh, um, you know, heft consciousness has. Mm. You know, it might be that it's a kind of afterthought. <laughs> Do you think that's possible? I don't think so, no. So you think consciousness has had a very a, a strong selective uh, I would, benefit? I would guess so, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I think there are some things it's better to do unconsciously. Uh, for consciousness is slow. So yeah, that's why right. we have the dorsal visual system. It's right. much faster. Right. Right. And, you know, it allows us to move through the world, weaving in right. and out, and, and um, uh, you know, faster than thought. Faster the glass than is on thought. the table, and it's hit, and it drops, and yeah, you know, exactly. I'll, I'll pick it up. That's and, right. and then when I have it in my hand, I'm, I'm conscious of it. That's right, yeah. And exactly. So we're, we're able to make those kind of decisions. Yeah. That it, it's, it's hard to judge. Was I consciously doing that? Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's certainly a, uh, um, it certainly doesn't, it's not my normal conscious state. Right. Yeah. So do you think then, therefore, consciousness is, um, uh, is a, an accident of evolution? Uh, if we, you ran the t tape of evolution again, uh, would it always produce consciousness? The unconscious systems we have are, are, are inflexible. There's a really good chapter in Dahan's book. I disagree with most of his view, uh, but on what consciousness does for us and what things we can do consciously uh, that we can't do unconsciously. And the basic difference is, on the, is what we can do unconsciously uh, is fairly inflexible and unsophisticated. Mm -hmm. So, for example, he shows that one-step reasoning can be done unconsciously, but to do two-step reasoning, you uh -huh. need consciousness. Oh, oh, that's interesting. And so, therefore, that would indicate a, a very strong selective uh, benefit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, uh, if you had a trip, if, if you saw a predator over there, you could run from it, but if the predator was hiding and had two steps, you, you would yeah, then yeah. be in trouble unless That's you right. had yeah. something else. That's right. Yeah. So you, you would say that uh, although it, consciousness is an accident of evolution, it is something that uh, is, uh, at least has a, has a, a, a benefit that would, if it, if it occurred accidentally, it would be selected for. I think, would that be your position? Uh, my guess is that... Um, is that we need it for something important. Maybe it first evolved, for example, for motivation. Um, but then once we had it, it turned out to be quite useful. Mm -hmm. That's what I would guess.